Our next presenter will be uh, Rizwan Ali Shina Shiwari, please. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Rizwan Shinwari. Uh, I'm a PhD uh, fellow uh, in the Department of Peace and Conflict Studies, Center for International Peace and Stability, National University of Sciences and Technology, uh, Pakistan. I'm also a visiting scholar uh, in the Department of Political Science, University of Massachusetts, Amherst. Uh, yes. So uh, my topic today is identity conflict and economic development in Pakistan. So overall, there are uh, three uh, uh, indicators or de uh, determinants of my topic, uh, identity in conflict and then economic development. Regarding identity, uh, I just want to share a point uh, uh, in connection with the presentation already made uh, by my friend, uh, Dr. Medina. There is a verse in Quran uh, which is Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min zakari wa unsa wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa kaba'ila li ta'arafu. Uh, its uh, meaning is that God is saying in Quran that we created male and female and then we created society into factions and tribes. But what is the purpose of this creation, you know? So in the same words, he explains, we created them just to identify, means not to show each other superior or inferior, just for an identification. It is not a part of my presentation, though, but it is connected with, with the uh, a presentation done by my friend and uh, uh, discussion we made yesterday. And in, in the same, uh, uh, on another place, our Prophet, uh, Prophet Muhammad, uh, in his last sermon, uh, because he was born in Arabia, Saudi Arabia, he was mentioning to his followers that uh, no Arab is superior or non-Arab, which they call it Ajam in Arabic language. And no Ajam or non-Arabic is superior or the Arabs. Because at that time, like, uh, a prophet realized the fact that people might use this Arabic word because of, you know, uh, God sent many uh, a messenger uh, to Saudi Arabia and people might use uh, or might consider themselves as superior. So it is not a new phenomenon. And in Islam, uh, our messengers, all messengers, almost all messengers uh, are, are in all religions uh, try to, you know, press this idea and, you know, uh, and, and spread love in humanity. So this was uh, a few points I wanted to share uh, in connection with uh, my friend's um, uh, presentation. So I will be presenting uh, uh, overall briefly. I will be um, uh, talking about uh, the connection of conflict and economic development in Pakistan. So just um, uh, a, a brief idea of geography, uh, religion uh, 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 of Pakistan. So then uh, Afghanistan is located in the northwest, Iran is located uh, in the west, and uh, India is uh, uh, located in the east of Pakistan. So it's very important. Uh, the northwestern countries of Pakistan are uh, Islamic countries, and uh, the western uh, country is Iran. Iran is also very important because uh, in, pa uh, in Islam, we have two uh, uh, major sects in Islam. We call it Shia and Sunni. And it was also a source or a cause of conflict in Pakistan for almost a decade. So it's very important. Afghanistan is Sunni majority country, right? And Iran is a Shia majority country. But there were like the dynamics of conflict uh, in this region, in, in this Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, uh, uh, had been changed. And especially it is changed after 9-11. It got its new shape after 9-11. So this is the causal, uh, cause and impacts of, um, of the, uh, the terrorism, uh, which both uh, Afghanistan faced since last four decades and Pakistan is facing since last uh, 16 or 18 years uh, in our country. It had, so there are some causes which uh, I explained in my paper, but uh, uh, 
generally I will uh, uh, just shed some light on each of them. General Zia's Islamization in 1980, the Iranian Revolution in Iran, Islamic Revolution in Iran, it was a cause of uh, the ethno-religious, uh, ethno-sectarian conflict in Pakistan right after 9-11. Saudi's role and its proxies, because Saudi is a Sunni majority country uh, in the world, and Iran is a, Sh a Shia majority country in the world. So they both try to uh, fight proxy wars in, in Islamic countries. And this is the reason Middle East is under the flames of conflict since last, uh, you know, two decades. Uh, it is like other than petrodollar. Religion and sect is also one of the main cause of uh, the conflict in Middle East. Then Iran-Iraq war uh, also changed uh, Pakistan's foreign policy toward that conflict. Soviet invasion in Afghanistan is actually the start of the story. And uh, my friend already uh, uh, tried to cover one aspect of, uh, uh, of this topic when Soviet invaded into Afghanistan in uh, 1980. Uh, 1982 or 81, uh, it was a start of uh, a perpetual conflict which lasted for, which, which is still going on, I would say. And it had deep implications on Pakistan. After the conflict, uh, like there were CIA, ISI, Saudi Arabia, uh, because there was a cold war going on in the entire world which like Asia is, was the hot spot of that uh, conflict between Russia and uh, America, between socialism, Marxism, and capitalism. So Afghanistan was the last end point uh, between these powers. And uh, Russia uh, broke away uh, uh, with a, uh, a joint venture by Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, and America. So Pakistan provided... Uh, uh, lunch pairs for and trainings to the Mujahideen at that time they were called Mujahideen right but after that when Russia withdrew from Afghanistan those factions started fighting with each other so and uh, after that another era like the second phase of conflict started in Afghanistan which was between uh, those uh, fiction so uh, one fiction emerged uh, 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 they were powerful and they later on they become a, a, a Taliban and they captured Kabul in 1996 uh, which was a uh, ruling over Afghanistan uh, till 9-11 uh, after 2001 when United States uh, started uh, uh, bombing uh, Taliban uh, uh, regions and posts in Kabul and removed Taliban from the government and uh, establish uh, a democratic government in Afghanistan. So, and role, role of religious group, this, these were some causes which I identified, major causes uh, which fueled sectarian, sectarian ethnic-based uh, terrorism or conflict in Pakistan. So it had three uh, major impacts on Pakistan society, its politics, its culture, and its economics. So uh, my theme of this paper is just to highlight economics, how these um, uh, these factors fueled conflict in Pakistan and how it affected the uh, economy of Pakistan. So this is again um, uh, a brief timeline of uh, the events that occurred um, in Afghanistan because Pakistan and Afghanistan uh, they share borders more than 2500 kilometers and uh, a single spark in Afghanistan can have drastic changes in Pakistan as well. And I, I'm living in the border. I'm living in the border and uh, uh, I have seen flames of conflict uh, since I was born. I have seen Taliban, I have seen Mujahideen. And uh, then again, the, the second phase of Taliban in Pakistan right after 9-11. My area was conflict in, conflict in Pakistan for almost 16 uh, or 17 years until 2016 and 17 when Pakistan totally cleared uh, uh, the 10% of the region of Taliban's influence inside Pakistan. So Russia invasion in 1979 and uh, 1989 Russia withdrew because it was defeated by the, I would say, elite forces of uh, uh, United States, uh, capitalist blocs, uh, including United States, Saudi Arabia, uh, Pakistan and many other countries. And uh, in 1995 and 1996, Taliban came to power again after 9-11 uh, incident, uh, U.S. invaded Afghanistan. So from 2000, and, uh, 2000 to 2016, there was a destruction in Pakistan. 
more than uh, according to documented uh, and reports, there were more than 80,000 people killed in Pakistan, but I uh, keep it empty this space because there was nothing other than destruction. And uh, I will be later on discussing uh, uh, specifically the determinants of destruction and its impacts on the economy of Pakistan. Uh, in 2014, uh, those terrorists uh, in Pakistan attack, uh, attacked a school in which they uh, killed school children, more than 140 school children. It shocked the entire world because it was the second or the only uh, uh, incident of its nature uh, in the 100 uh, year history of mankind. After which, uh, Pakistan government uh, uh, launched um, uh, 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 an operation because there were, uh, like inside Pakistan, the society was divided. Society was divided because Pakistan government has its own Taliban, which people think that Pakistan was using. In United States, alleged Pakistan that Pakistan is using its own Taliban to train in Pakistan and be used in, in Afghanistan. So there was like a, a trust deficit between Pakistan government in Afghanistan uh, and United States. So inside society, people uh, stood up against government and uh, uh, forced the government to stop um, supporting and sponsoring any kind of Taliban. So in literature, they used good Taliban. In United States and in Pakistan, they used term good Taliban. Good Taliban were those Taliban which were, you know, like um, uh, good guys of government in Pakistan. Uh, or I would say Pakistan uh, uh, kept them to be used in Afghanistan in times of emergency and Kashmir as well. So Kashmir is another uh, flashing point for Pakistan's conflict with India. It is totally a different topic, but it had it has um, sectarian and uh, yeah, it has religious uh, factor as well of this conflict. And um, 2019 is uh, considered to be um, uh, uh, like it is uh, an year in which Afghanistan is truly going through a crossroad. And this is the point which uh, I guess this is the point where my friend already highlighted what's what happened and what will be uh, what's going to happen in future as well. So, yes, now this is um, is an indicator of conflict. I, I took people killed simple. Uh, since 9-11 in, Paki in Pakistan. So you see in 2000, like there are conflicts going on in Pakistan, like there are separatist moments and then there are different nature of conflicts in Pakistan. So in 2000, there are 166 people killed in different conflicts. But as you see, uh, in 2009, it reached to the peak of 11,000 people, like um, in different uh, suicide attacks and bomb blasts in Pakistan, 11,000 people were killed in 2011. My point in this paper is that this conflict had deep impacts on our economy and it um, uh, affected our economy. And I will be using different indicators of uh, economy and GDP and how it affected um, uh, economy of Pakistan because this point is very important. In 2007, 8, and 9, there was global financial crisis. So, like people ask a question that maybe the 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 change in GDP uh, might be caused by the global financial crisis because Pakistan is connected with the global um, financial system. So you see the GDP growth rate. The blue line is GDP growth rate. And the dotted line is the people killed, uh, are, it is the same line, I uh, regenerated it here. So uh, it, uh, after 2016 and 17, there is um, a, an opposite direction between these two lines. You see this line, so from this line onward, GDP is going down and the people and uh, insurgency events and people killed is going up. So at this peak point in 2009 and 10, it was the peak point uh, when it was uh, in full swing, the uh, terrorist activities were in full swing. But at the same time, you see in this uh, era, there was uh, 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 a drop in our GDP growth rate. Uh, in 2008, it uh, dropped uh, down uh, below 2%. And again, it, it was continued for almost five years. So different research uh, studies done uh, 
टू आइडेंटिफाई इफ दिस ग्रोथ ग्रोथ रेट स्लो ग्रोथ रेट इज एट्रीब्यूटेड और अफेक्टेड बाय द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट सो some studies done uh, which shows that uh, this growth rate uh, the uh, decrease in growth rate was really um, caused by uh, this conflict not by um, uh, the global financial crisis i did not uh, discuss the uh, i just give some highlights of the global financial crisis uh, in our on our pakistan economy because we are connected with the financial global financial system but it is not you know um, like other uh, western countries we are still um, having problems uh, like trade and other uh, issues uh, with the global uh, uh, with the globalization i would say a studies uh, done by um, uh, zahid Uh, according to his study terrorism has affected the it is the summary of that study uh, findings of that study terrorism has affected the foreign direct investment in pakistan which decreased to 3.6% in 2015 from 6.6 uh, sorry 6 6.6 in 2005 similarly it also affected capital accumulation which was 17% of the gdp in 2005 and dropped to 13% of gdp uh, the expenditure similarly uh on overcoming terrorism had been decreased from uh, had been increased from 1.4% of the gdp uh, to 11% of the gdp in the same time frame these three factors are significant economic variables that tell a story um, uh, tell a lot how much pakistan's economy in all major sectors had been uh, deeply affected so this is the end of my <laughs> my presentation okay thank you